In this example, I have a Nexia CS with 10 inputs, 6 outputs, and a simple mixer in between. If I wanted to add a Nexia SP to this system, for a few extra inputs, quite a few more outputs, and some additional capabilities, it seems as though I could just expand the mixer, wire up the channels, and I'm ready to go. Unfortunately, that's not the case. If I try to compile this design, the compiler will tell me I have to use Nextlink I.O. blocks to pass audio between units. I can access a Nextlink I.O. block by clicking on the NX on the toolbar. When I click in the configuration view, I'm asked for a transmitting unit and a receiving unit. If I want to replace these four wires, I'll be transmitting from unit number two and receiving in unit number one, assuming I want my mixer to remain in device number one. So I set it to transmit from two, receive on one, and I hit OK. When you place a pair of Nextlink blocks, the very first thing you should do is rename them. If you don't rename them, you're going to end up with a bunch of different blocks that have nothing to do with each other, and they're all named Nextlink in and Nextlink out. Very simply, I can go over here, change the name on this one to Nextlink 2 to 1. Now they both have the same name. I can identify those as being the same link. To use these objects, I delete my existing wires and just replace them with the Nextlink nodes. That's all I have to do. I've now completed the link from the SP inputs to the standard mixer. To do the same thing on the other side, I need another set of blocks. When I place these blocks, notice that I no longer have the option of transmitting unit number two. That's already been used over here. Select transmitting unit number one, receiving unit number two, and place those two blocks. Again, the very first thing I want to do is rename those two blocks. Once they've been renamed, they can be moved into place, wired up, and our design is now ready to compile. You can also move these blocks around, change their size, do a lot of things to make them a little less obtrusive on your design. In some cases, where you place your Nextlink nodes can be very important. In this design, the Nextlink nodes are immediately after the inputs on the SP and immediately before the outputs on the SP. In this file, those nodes have been moved so that they are after the input EQs and before the output EQs. There's no difference between these two designs functionally, but there's a huge difference when it comes time to compile them. The first design, with the nodes immediately after the inputs and immediately before the outputs, won't compile. It won't compile because every bit of processing has been pushed into device number one by those Nextlink nodes. If we're careful with where we place the nodes, we can do all of our input and output processing for the device number two inputs and outputs in device number two, and this design will compile. 